My apologies to Elijah McAllister. Uh, I run the show, Elijah, and uh, we are late coming to you because I got us five minutes behind schedule. It is on me. Do not blame Ryan Brown. It's all on me. Uh, was it going to make us run? I hope not. Uh, Craneworks brings you Elijah McAllister, the big guy, says don't forget the big dog when it comes to crane works and rental works. If you were consistently late to practice, what would be the normal punishment for that, Elijah? Oh, man. Well, first, my teammates would probably be really upset. <laughs> um, and then I, I'm sure I'd have to, you know, you know, work out, do an extra workout by myself or something, or there'd be some type of punishment along those lines. But I've never been late. Uh, thankfully, since I've been here, I try to you know, be on time prepared. <laughs> we, we believe that. We heard uh, Matt Rule, Nebraska's head coach, said he was told in practice that he works his, his guys the second hardest of any college coach they've seen. How hard are Hugh Freeze practices right now? Well, I think they've ramped up a bit. We're trying to get back to, you know, who we are as a team and by finding an identity through whether that's offense, defense, special team. So I think, you know, particularly yesterday, he emphasized us, you know, really honing in on our skills and, and taking care of our craft so that we can be a better, uh, have a better product on the field. So I feel like they're they're really strenuous, particularly because our offense goes fast. Um, and, and for a defensive guy, it's a lot of running. So. <laughs> Uh, if you, back to the being on time thing, have you ever been like somewhere on campus or, you know, in the middle of doing something and then you realize like you may be running late, it's going to be close for you to get there on time? Has that ever happened or do you plan it that far out in advance? I, I've, I've had a couple. I think one, maybe it's not really on campus, but I was actually going home uh, during a break in the summer and I had to be back for workouts Monday morning. And my flight uh, got delayed. I'm from New Jersey, so my flight got delayed, and there's no obviously way to get to Auburn, Alabama, from New Jersey that quick. <laughs> and I had to make a few calls, and I was super stressed out because I'm trying to figure out, man, how am I going to get on time and be on time for my team Monday morning? My flight was delayed. It was bad weather. Ended up, you know, missing a Monday and just coming in on Tuesday. But it was something that, you know, like that happened. But on campus, nah. If I'm here, I'm, I'm gonna be here on time. I usually plan it out pretty well. Do you have dreams sometimes that you're in the locker room still trying to f- – where's my cleats? And the game started, and I, I'm, I'm not prepared. I need to get out there? Yeah, actually, more often than not, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> yeah. Elijah McAllister is with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. He's presented each week by Crane Works. The big guy says don't forget the big dog, Crane Works and Rental Works. As a team captain and a guy that's on defense, um, look, nobody I'm sure is more frustrated with the offensive struggles than the guy that's, that play on that offense and the offensive coaches. Um, but as a team captain, to what extent, if at all, do you kind of have to police some of the younger guys on your defense to not let the frustration spill over, don't point fingers, things like that? Do you have to do that at all? Yeah, 100%. I mean, it's human nature to kind of watch the game and as we continue to go out through the season and and how we have been the past few games, just watching the game and seeing it for what it is. You know, our offense not playing to their standard, our defense, you know, playing uh, not up to our standard, but, you know, better than um, some give us credit for. So I think, you know, it's tough as humans. We just kind of naturally just like, man, like what's going on? It's easy to blame the other side of the ball. But again, as they talk about as a leader, as a captain, as a person who, you know, wants to continue to prove as a team, that doesn't really help the offense. They know they're not playing well. Um, they know they're not playing you know, up to their standard like they should and they want to. Um, and we have really, really good leaders on that side of the ball as well, and they're going to, you know, get that ship turned around. Boy, you, got, you guys have yeah. seen three really good quarterbacks in a row, from Carson Beck to Jaden Daniels to uh, what you saw this past week with Jackson Dart. How does Jackson Dart stack up with those other guys? Yeah, he's really good. He's got to play a lot of football. I think he's, uh, he's a different kind of quarterback than uh, those other two particularly. I think he's just as smooth as Jaden Daniels. Um, but obviously, Jaden Daniels is really dynamic. Has really dynamic weapons outside that, that helps that helps him a lot as well, and a really good offensive line. Um, but he, he's a guy that can do everything. He's made he made some crazy throws. I'll be honest, some crazy throws this last week. I was I was I was like, wow, okay, it's, it's a kick and play, and obviously he can run just surpass a thousand yards career. So he's a he's a good quarterback in my eyes. He's what this league is about. Can do both things at a really high level and really physical and, and a tough competitor. Um, did his speed surprise you? Because I, I was watching a video, they clocked him at 19.4 miles per hour, which I think would get you a speeding ticket on the streets outside of Jordan-Hare Stadium. <laughs> so does, did his speed surprise you guys a little bit? I mean, not really. We, we know him watching film that he can go. Uh, obviously, he's not going to be just the, the track star that, that some, some of these guys are um, at the quarterback position in this league, but he can still really roll and, and – um, 
obviously, you know, that offense is, is tailored around his skill set, his abilities. That's taking, you know, deep shots and running the football, which you can do well at a high level. So that it didn't really surprise us because he's shown that he can do it in this league for, for years. When you look at Mississippi State, this weekend's opponent on tape, and you, you've had the experience in the past with this team, how different do they look offensively to you from when the late, great Mike Leach was their coach? Is there a huge difference on the things they're trying to do? Yes. Uh, uh, you, you guys know, just as well as anyone, the, Mike Leach's offense and his coaching tree is very unique. Uh, and, and It's hard to replicate, so the difference is, is you can see it um, on tape. And I think there's also differences based on what quarterback uh, is playing and going to be playing uh, this week. And obviously, with a ton of respect for both of them, Will Rogers is a great you know, player in his league and, and has you know, set some records so far. And I actually played with Mike Wright at Vanderbilt the last two years, so I know him well as well. Um, so it, it differs based on what quarterback is in the game, but also, you know, coming from Mike Leach's offense these past few years, it's just different to uh, kind of transition and get the right personnel in and, and change because that coaching tree and the offense is so unique to what they do. How uh, can you get Hugh Freeze's ear pretty quickly? Because I just want, play for I'm going to help you guys out. Rivaldo Fairweather needs more touches. You see the guy in practice. There are two playmakers on your team offensively to me, Jark Wes, who came to play last week, and Rivaldo. And Rivaldo does not get enough targets. Yeah, I mean, I, I can get to pre, uh, Coach uh, Freeze's ear pretty quickly, but I, I try to let him handle you know the offensive stuff. I, I, He's called great games uh, in his career and, and continues to call some good ones here. And I know he's going to get the right guys the ball, but you see Valdo, he's a playmaker, like you said. I mean, the, both those guys are really good players. We've seen it in practice. We've seen it in camp. We've seen it in spurts and games. We've got to continue to you know, get those guys, which they have been showing up consistently every single day to do it and allowing other players to you know play off that. So, Would you want to pick up his dinner tab or one of your defensive linemen's dinner tab? I want my D linemen's dinner tab. They, they, <laughs> I enjoy going out to eat with them. We, we try to, uh, you know, pay for each other's meals depending on how how much the bill is. We like hibachi a lot, so we go to Makata's or Kabuki and we we, we eat a lot. <laughs> oh, the hibachi! Uh, oh, I love that. Uh, give me your hibachi order. I love freaking hibachi food. Oh, you gotta go uh, steak and shrimp. Yep, and then you have to get an uh, extra side order of noodles because I like I like noodles as well. So you gotta get steak and shrimp, extra rice, and then a side order of noodles. Can I? Uh, and, yeah, can can. Oh, I'm sorry, you weren't done. Continue, please. Well, and then honestly, the big dilemma is, do you want vegetables or not? Yeah, the vegetables are good, but you want more rice and you want more noodles. So it's like, ah, do you do the vegetables? Do you not? So that depends on the day. Do yeah. you like the salad? That miso salad? Yes, I yes, love that. That so dressing good. so good. You, you cannot recreate that anywhere it, in the world. It's so hard. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know what kind of dressing that is, but it's amazing. I don't know what kind of dressing. You can buy it in a store. What they what they say is that same dressing. But it doesn't taste like. But it's, it's, it's ginger dressing. Yeah, but it's like it's watered down in there, and it just makes it better. I don't know, man. You can't. You you cannot replicate it. Yeah. Do uh, listen. You're a defensive guy. When they throw the shrimp at you, do you catch it every time? Or I guess if you did, you'd be on offense. It'd be a, it'd be a tight end. I'd probably, probably be on offense. I don't know. We uh, I probably do it more often than not. Probably seven out of ten. I'm good. Seven out of ten. <laughs> Now, I'm, yeah, not, yeah. I'm sure every hibachi restaurant is different, but a little life hack here. If somebody in your party orders shrimp, they generally give everybody a couple. Like, they'll cook a bunch, give it to the person that orders it, and everybody else gets a couple. And I found, like, two shrimp is enough if I've got steak and chicken. Right. I go steak and chicken. I don't yeah. go, I don't go well, shrimp. I, like the I just shrimp. go chicken. I like the shrimp like him, but if somebody else orders it, I know I'm probably going to get a couple, and that's enough for me. Yeah, I have a strong <laughs> sea, seafood rule that if I'm not at a restaurant I trust, I need to see the ocean before I order anything out of the ocean. And I, uh, last time I was in Auburn, I can't see the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to go to Tampa or something. Cool. I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, of course now he'll order a steak without being able to see a cow, but he, <laughs> yeah, that does yeah, not yeah, stop yeah. him. I don't I know why. they're good. I drove past one. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, that was not an Auburn joke. That was an overall joke. Uh, all right. He is Elijah McAllister, the Auburn team captain and linebacker. Elijah, thank you very much for the time. Good luck against State. We'll see you next week. Thank you. See you next week. All right, buddy. Take care. Elijah with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. He and Tyler Booker join us every single week. Tyler on Mondays to recap the Alabama game. Elijah on Wednesdays. They both join us courtesy of Crane Works. Don't forget the big dog. The big guys say look at the big dog for Crane Works and Rental Works.